to share more is to help people to understand that this is not about me. Like I'm not doing this because I'm angry or I want to get at anybody. I'm, I'm trying to seek revenge. And to answer your question, I will tell my story a million times, a million times, because I'm sure that 7 billion people on this planet haven't heard it. And there are more people who need to be helped. There are more people who need to hear that you can get out of this. There, right. It is not about me. Many people think that this is about me and Sandra went and did this and can you see and blah, blah, blah. I'm not trying to start gossip. This is not gossip. Whether I mention people's names or I don't mention people's names, those people have the choice mm -hmm. to repent if they want to repent. And that's between them and God. If they wanted mm -hmm. a beautiful line, I heard if they wanted me to tell a better story about them, they should have behaved differently. And they still have the chance, but they've chosen not to. So it's really not about names. I'm not trying to bring anybody down, but if we can get them to stop, praise God. But this is about bringing people out of uh, the devil's clutches about it's about the system that I'm trying to talk about, that this is a system and that there is a spirit behind the church. And, you know, people who are associated and tolerating that behavior, they are part of, they know, they know that, and they're taught that they're under a specific anointing. They need to check what that anointing is, what that spirit is that they are under. Like, it's not about, it's, it's just to emphasize that this is not gossip. I'm trying to tell people what is going on inside there. It is not about individual experiences. It is about a system Good. that happens. I need them to understand that. And I'm also, glad you cleared that out. And also just to um, spend a little bit of time talking about how you come to the place where you agree to do some of those things. Like it's not, like I said, you know, scripture was used to tell me that, yeah, um, David also had concubines, yet David was a man after God's heart. After some time of hearing those kind of scriptures and those kind of things, you actually do think that it is okay. And it, after, like, you know, I don't know whether it takes months or years of someone teaching you that this is okay and this is okay, you mm. begin to believe it and you begin to understand that there's actually nothing wrong with you. And you're, you, you're, you're, oh, yeah. let's, let's zoom in a bit on that issue of concubine which 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 for me is a total abuse of scripture um because okay. david did it doesn't mean god endorsed it you know so for you a christ embassy i mean you are working very closely with the pastors you are in media and also in other areas so you basically there is that awareness that some of the pastors male or females they they are married but they have girlfriends and side chicks and that, that was common knowledge among some of the people, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. That's right. And um, I mean, I, I knew I wasn't the only one. And I had friends who also had, um, you know, sexual relations with other people or with, with pastors. And it was a known fact. And there were people who are turning a blind eye and they think that that's okay. And it's not okay. Okay. Yeah, because maybe they've been convinced with the scriptures that have been shared. Because, I mean, if if your leader, I mean, you were with Christ Embassy in Johannesburg, if the leader then, be it Pastor Ken or Pastor Ose, uh, having a relationship with another man or another woman, and growing from the scripture of Moses, having uh, David, you know, having concubines, you know, I don't really understand that. David had a relationship with Bathsheba, which was... Yeah. which actually cost him a lot of trouble it it, yeah. it it was a huge mistake that he had to pay a whole lot for it uh, and because david did it doesn't mean god is okay with it and that's one thing people and i think you know in a, in a place like christ embassy that is being promoted you know you take scriptures and then you twist it and 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 so so you know you know people that the we're sleeping together uh, some of them are married, maybe married people sleeping with single people, uh, single people sleeping with married people, single people sleeping with single people, married people sleeping with exactly. married people. Yes. It, it's, it's just going on, isn't it? Yep. It's perfectly normal amongst those of us who knew. Um, I mean, I got a lot of messages from people to say that they were also shocked. And I, for me, that was a shock that people were shocked because amongst most of us i if i think of some names five names can come to mind off the top of my head that this was happening with this 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 these people and it was normal because we were in the offices mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. what was the, the mm -hmm. yeah 
Go ahead. And and also there was um, there was a, a flat opposite the church where some of us stayed, and people would come there as well, and all of these things would happen there. Hmm. So it, it's it's something. I mean, sexual immorality then was was very acceptable. But then now, if because we're talking about the leadership here, because you were close to the leadership, obviously you are a staff for how long? Seven years? Six years? Uh, seven to eight years. Yeah. Seven, to eight, seven to eight years. Eight years. So yeah. Yeah, but then the congregation, the person who walks into the doors of the church you know on a tuesday or on a sunday has no idea that this is you know <laughs> that the mess that's going on with the leaders you know so it's it's a big hypocritical situation it is terrible this is the scripture that i brought up last time that said and they would emphasize it when they can see that you're starting to misbehave or what can you call it um you're going too far don't cause the next person to stumble and that's a it's like a brain trip what do you mean but you don't see that you're stumbling if you're saying that i mustn't do this so that other people won't also do it you are stumbling but that was the scripture that they used to say don't do this in public you can't let everybody know and that's the way to keep it like a hush hush secret we can't let anybody know so that we don't cause the children to stumble or the brethren to stumble mm. So it was kept hmm. a secret. I mean, you, it was kept a secret. Yeah. So you can do it as long as it's a secret, as long as you, exactly. you keep it in a very close circle. You could fornicate, you could commit adultery, uh, you could do a whole lot of stuff. It, it's fine, exactly. you know, as long as it's a secret. Yeah. Because, and the other layer now, now, of it was because they, the, the other people are not mature enough to understand that it's okay. But we are mature enough to I know see. that we can have concubines. So if they do it, then they are in sin. But we are not. As a pastor, you can have a side chick. It's okay to keep it in that small cycle. For the people that understand, that means for the people that are also doing the same thing, cheating, yes, fornicating, a drug trust language. relationship. Yes, there's a language that says that grace, we're, um, we have the grace to do it. Some people don't have the grace and they get caught. So, but we have the grace, so we're okay. So, <laughs> okay, let's look at this language now. You have a grace to sin. Yeah. You know, you have a grace to fornicate as a single person. You are a single person and a pastor or a leader. You have the grace mm -hmm. as a single person in the church to sleep with the pastor if he says you know he wants to sleep with you though he's married you sleep with him and he has the grace so that kind of grace no let's let's really talk about it how did you even get to a place where you were programmed to accept these things you lived in this for seven eight years you know mm -hmm. how now that you are out of it how do you think people are conditioned to accept and believe these things I think it definitely starts from what I said earlier, that uh, people with an itching ear are easy targets. Everybody hears what they want to hear. If somebody likes money, you're going to like the prosperity gospel. If you like hmm. fornicating and all of that kind of stuff, you are going to accept whatever it is that you're being told. So there's, there's people right now like, how could I accept that? I knew that was like the first life that I liked at the time so it was easy for me to say oh okay and to you know you 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 know deep down in your heart that these things are wrong you know that deep down in your you know you know that god is not a materialistic god yes he wants us to prosper but you know he's not a materialistic god and you know that you like money deep down in your heart everybody knows god's truth but they accept it because it's coming from a man of God. So their, their own desire and their own appetite has now been justified by the word of God. And I mean, the Bible can justify just about anything if you want it to. So anyone that yeah. justifies your own... Yeah, you can use it for anything. Exactly. So when your own flesh and, the, and you, can, you can justify your own appetite and your desires, then you are happy. And that's the kind of gospel that's being preached 
that um, allows people to be who they want to be. And now they're saying love covers a multitude of sin and all that rubbish, you know? So it's, it's a gospel that appeals mm. to the flesh. So I think that's where it starts. That's how you allow mm. yourself to be manipulated no, because mean, you want the things. Yeah. Now you've had relationship with many, uh, a few pastors there. Uh, and you, you had an abortion. You had an abortion, is it? If I remember I very well. Uh, you have. I don't know how many. Sorry. Many. Yeah, you don't know how many. So you had several abortions, many abortions, and a lot of it from from pastors in the church, from leaders in the church. Uh, you know, and people would say, "But why didn't you see it? Why didn't you?" exempt yourself like the case of knowing that you know you you you're fornicating with this pastor he's a pastor was it the fact that he's a pastor that was okay for you to do it and how how would he even convince you to sin you know mm -hmm. uh obviously both of you had a role to play uh in the whole thing but but what what sort of because I want, I'm asking this question for the sake of, 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 of ladies who are in some of these churches and also some of them that would come into uh, amid certain men like this, you know, that you know this is sin. Yes, we all make mistakes, but <laughs> there are certain things that you just run, you know. The Bible says flee. That was flee, what it says. Exactly. You know, flee. Mm -hmm. flee from, Don't fall you know. your appetite. So, <laughs> mm, mm. And young girls, mm. young girls. So what was that? Yeah. No, go on. I'll answer. Go ahead. The, young like, what, what was the? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. They what? They can't say no. Young girls, what? They have mm. trouble saying mm. no because they can't stand up for themselves. They need to be able to trust themselves and know who they are, and be able to say no. Mm. That's okay, a good go answer because some of us men would not understand because we're not women. So we might, we're not young women. We're not women that are, we don't know. We're not women that we're vulnerable. So we not understand that. Say no, women. Just say now, no. Trust yourselves. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. But what do you guys, the, the, the women, the girls who are in, serving in the church you are staff in the church interacting with the pastors every time what would you guys be discussing amongst yourself was there a camaraderie amongst yourself do you talk about the fact that you fornicated with a married pastor uh or do you talk about or you just hush was just hush 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 you don't talk about it you know just pretend you don't see it. just pretend you don't know it uh do you guys ever sit down at you know, somebody sitting there and saying, look, that is not right. You know, we need to do what is what is right. No, we never spoke about it. Um, I think it was a very much an after hours thing. It was very kept in the dark. Um, and, you know, you would talk about it with who you spoke about it with, but not just in the corridors. And maybe if I see another lady, like the first guy that I spoke about, uh, he slept with a lot of women, a lot, and he told me about most of them. Um, and I'd see them in the corridor, and they'd see me, and we'd know, you know, okay. And I would know, I knew a lot about other women, because they would tell me, oh, she went to this clinic to do her abortion, so why don't you try it? Um, or she went to this clinic, or they'd call me and say, oh, this one needs to do an abortion, where did you go, and what do you recommend? that kind of so it was very much like need to know it wasn't like fun and we're discussing our date last night or anything like that it was just like need to know or yeah that kind of thing which is mm. terrible and in the midst of all that has any staff or any pastor been suspended or been you know fired because they are fornicating or because they are committing adultery um, I can't talk about what I don't know. I haven't seen it, but I've heard that pastors have been suspended and moved around. And that's when I heard that 
oh, that pastor or that CEC member, which is the Central Executive Council, was caught and he didn't have the grace that he thought he had. He didn't have the grace that this other CEC member had or this other pastor had. You see, that one has been doing it, but he's clever about it and they'll never move him. But this one, they'll move him because he wasn't clear about what he was doing. He didn't have the grace to do that. So he should just stop. And you're still calling it grace. <laughs> That's what they would say. That's where you I know. <laughs> that was the first time actually it exactly. was mentioned with a, a CEC pastor. The CEC pastor is the central yeah. executive company, the pastors that stay close to Pastor Chris. Okay, okay, okay. So, so you, 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 when you're caught, that means you don't have enough grace. So you have a so technically there's a grace to sin, but when you are <laughs> caught, then your grace is not enough. For you, you're not you know, because you were caught. Seed. Yeah, you're not sowing enough seed again. Now you're complicating the whole thing. I should give money, <laughs> you know, when I'm sinning. I'm in sin, and then I should give money. <laughs> You know, I, I'm still, because I'm trying to, Sandra, I'm trying to understand the culture, because this is a culture, this, what you're yeah. saying here. You know, it's a culture, it's an acceptable friends. culture. For so many years, it's an acceptable culture. And not just at Christ Embassy, other churches operate and do the same thing. And teach, you know, twist the Bible in the same way. Twist the Bible, telling you there's grace, there's grace for this. How can you even have grace for sin? The grace for sin is for you to get out of sin. That's what grace is. <laughs> it's for you to stop sinning. Amen. That's what you grace know, is. Can I can I tell you something interesting? Was that um, it took me a long time, even after I left Christ Embassy, to to start to understand these things because, like you said, my my faith was a complete sh shipwreck. I didn't really care mm -hmm. for, you know. But anyway. Um, I got back to Swaziland and I was looking for different churches. One that was not, uh, it wasn't about entertainment and it just, it just was about Jesus Christ and the gospel. And the first sermon message that I heard, not sermon, anyway, whatever it's called. The first message was I, I, he I heard was about holiness. I couldn't believe my life. It was the first time I had heard a pastor preach about holiness seeking after God eight Jesus years Christ. at christ embassy I after mean, eight years at christ embassy i drank that message up like i couldn't believe it and that holiness is a, a weapon of warfare i was like what mm -hmm. this was another gospel so when you asked me the other time did um did i learn a lot at christ embassy i threw away that entire doctrine whether there was truth in it or not some pastors were asking me like but you know, you're a Christian. You've been a Christian for a long time. Don't you know these things? And I say, well, maybe I knew them, but I need to check everything now. I need to check from scratch because I was not mm. trained to to go for godliness, to go for holiness, to like to seek holiness, mm. to see. You know, holiness was just not a subject. Mm. 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 So it's obvious because listening to you now at Christ Embassy, that's definitely not something that is. That is that is a priority, righteousness and holiness, right living with God, right standing right. God. Righteousness uh, was preached as righteousness was preached a lot, but righteousness was not our responsibility. Even though salvation is our responsibility, righteousness is a gift freely given, and the responsibility of righteousness is abdicated, is taken away from the person. So I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's a, oh, they even do it like that. It's a, it's a confession that they make. I am the righteousness mm. of God in Christ Jesus. I mean, anyone could make that confession. And you can see them all. Oh, this one was doing this. This one was doing that. That one does this, 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 this. But he's sitting there saying he's the righteousness of God. And that is what they call one of their higher revelations. One of the higher revelations. Deeper truth. Is, I don't know what they call it. But yeah. So righteousness is not my responsibility. I can sleep around. It's a I can manipulate people. Yeah. And I still is, I'm still righteous. I'm still righteous. I can cheat on my wife. As a pastor, I can sleep be sleeping with girls. Yes. I'm still right. Yes. And it's a revelation. Yes, sir. At Christ Embassy, they call it one of their top revelations. Oh uh, no, not that they call it one of their top revelations, but it's definitely one of their revelations. <laughs> 
Mm. Because it's been you, I, you I, get you get that teachings from especially from the top, from the leaders. Mm. Now that is definitely twisting the scriptures. Scary. That is teaching error. Yeah, that is teaching error, you know. Uh and it, it's it's so have you have you ever had anybody come to you and so whilst in Christ Embassy, nobody had come to you and give you another another perspective of righteousness or holiness amongst the leaders? No. They were, mm. you know what? The thing is, there are people, not everybody is like this. And that's one of the comments that I got that just because there are a few rotten potatoes in the church or a few rotten pastors, it doesn't mean that the whole church is, is rotten. However, and one of their <laughs> other favorite scriptures is that the, the anointing flows from the top, doesn't it? Down to the beard and down to the bottom of the comments. So where is it coming from? If there are so many rotten pastors, where is it coming from? The from? Top. Maybe they can use mm. their own scripture. Because one of, the, one of the characteristics of a cult is this business of imitation where they all, um, now they've changed it because maybe of, because of the criticism where they were all gelling their hair and they call that the revelation. And everybody who's yeah. holding a program is wearing a white suit because they all want to be Jesus in a suit and all of that. All of that imitation is not godly. But anyway, so mm. while they're busy imitating each other, why is it that only they think that only the anointing or only the good things, only the miracles are, are what's flowing from the head? Why so much... Um, immorality that's happening why are they calling it just a few pastors doesn't make the whole batch rotten it's coming from somewhere mm. and it's mm. being okayed mm. now you had a you had a, a, a you were part of the, the you were you were one of the main photographers in the church and also you you did graphic design that's what you studied uh you were a graphic designer uh i'm sure you guys have uh designed a lot of the materials uh that we see coming out of christ embassy and one of the popular materials coming out of christ embassy is the rhapsody of reality you know Tell us about the rhapsody of realities that has become very popular. Initially, it was by Pastor Chris and I, Anita Oyakilome before he got divorced. Uh, and it was very popular booklet that you you take to a whole lot of places. Uh, tell me tell, tell me about the rhapsody of reality and your involvement. Okay, I wasn't directly involved with designing the rhapsody of realities, but I can tell you about the rhapsody of realities that it is definitely a requirement um everybody must have the rhapsody of realities and um you must read the rhapsody of realities every single day of your life and if um i've never done any studies on it but definitely i um will say that it was promoted more than reading your bible every day because and then even christ embassy came out with the rhapsody of realities bible and one of the ways of indoctrination, obviously, is just to keep feeding people the same information over and over and over and over again. And while I'm on that subject, I'd like to also add that, you know, in Christ Embassy, we were encouraged only to read books by Pastor Chris. Um, and there were a few other authors that were encouraged, but it was frowned upon to read anything from other ministries, anything from other authors. In fact, if you find a, a staunch Christ Embassy member, they haven't stepped foot in any other church for years because it's discouraged. Mm. And they had this saying where they said that there are only two churches in the world. It's Christ Embassy and everybody else. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a cult. <laughs> so, you know. No, 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 no. You've, you've said a lot. you said a lot. Let's dissect this one at a time, you know. Okay. But I bet you are the fact that you know, Rhapsody of Reality was promoted quite a lot, much more than the Bible in itself. So a lot of the teachings come from Rhapsody. I, I actually thought maybe Rhapsody, Rhapsody of Reality was a, was a tool for evangelism. You know, you give to people who don't know Christ 
so they could come into church you know that, um, i didn't know that i didn't know that amongst you that the the leaders the staff that you know that it was also popular of course not only popular we had targets um churches had targets how many rhapsodies are you selling this month how many rhapsodies rhapsodies have you bought your rhapsody i would buy rhapsodies that i never read like i had rhapsodies because it was mandatory to buy your rhapsody you have to buy your rhapsody and there would be um there'd be a rhapsody reading at the beginning of every service and there'd even be testimonies like i read my rhapsody every day and this is my tips testimony so the rhapsody i think was idolized that's in my opinion so pastors and i mean maybe campus pastors or any sort of home sales pastors are uh, i encourage you know it's like you have to sell there's a target that you have to sell every month right yeah. uh, and then the money goes where i can't say i don't know because it's quite a lot you print quite a lot of copies isn't it yeah because for me it has become almost like another element of of, of many money making element you know especially when you s the rap to do of reality is there every week every month you talk about is there it's not like you have a a one month through the year that you concentrate and and try to and push it and all that any other devotional why can't i choose the devotional that i want to read no you can't you must read the rest so you're not encouraged to then you're not encouraged to i agree up reading the devotional called, called young people every day with jesus you know uh that's that's what i grew up reading and i read it for a long time so sometimes i would change to this and to that today i don't even use devotional i use the, the bible. niv about bible with my wife when we wake up we're reading through the book of of uh of uh deuteronomy right now so we started reading from genesis the beginning of the year so each day we read maybe a chapter or two and then we share and then we meditate and then we pray you know all that kind of stuff that's what i do because that's what i felt to do in the last year we read through the new testament so but here they, they like your testimony somehow would have to come through rhapsody of reality you know whatever elements of your life it has to be inspired by rhapsody of reality you know yes. and then you connect that rhapsody of reality you connect it's about pastor chris said or you know everything is like ministry yes. based it's ministry ministry you have to be ministry minded you're not like god minded or jesus minded or christ you know it's ministry or pastor chris or rhapsody and it's my rhapsody bible mm. if you, even if you have a bible even if you have a strong whatever you must get a rhapsody bible why don't you have a rhapsody bible mm. Mm. because when you come to look at it a lot of a lot of the people most times you hear them when they give a testimony they they always bring in pastor chris and i think even before the the arrival of other ministries that said you know the god of this prophet the god of that prophet i think the first place that i actually notice where there is a lot of accolades and references to the pastor you know outside of god is christ embassy you know so i could see that you surround yourself and then there is the i visited christ embassy's bookstore and actually all the books there are pastor chris's oh, books pastor <laughs> surprise surprise and it's the first time i was like what is this you know uh everything there was just pastor chris all the materials there are christ embassies and it left me with a whole other big question and you guys are encouraged go ahead there's no other pastor that comes to preach in christ embassy except christ embassy pastors there was one in the time that i was there that was not from christ embassy i don't know if it's changed but only one other pastor ever came to preach in christ embassy because they protect their doctrine and i think there's also a problem when they say that um um people that walk into the church a, a common comment is wow i've never heard the word being preached like this before i used to think that was a good thing but that's not normal that's not okay to say that you've yeah. never heard the word being preached yeah. like this before so what are you really hearing mm. Mm. then you must question it you must we must do like the Bereans did when they spent time with Paul. You know, it says yeah. that they spent time with Paul and then they go back home and they open the scriptures to make sure that what Paul had preached is actually in scripture 
and it's biblical and i think uh, yes. that is definitely not 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 really encouraged and then there's the fact of christ embassy's people not really visiting other churches did i mean during your time at christ embassies how often do you visit other churches maybe your friend invited you or something never never in seven years never it's unheard of look every other church is inferior to christ embassy if you if you get the word from another church it's like it's inferior it's looked down upon like i said there was this thing that they said that there's only two churches in the world it's christ embassy and every other church so even when i left and i said i was going to this other church people were like oh gosh you know like you're not really getting the real strong word you're not really getting that anointing and i don't know if you'll allow me to say just something else about being um this thing of falling under the power they think that that's yeah part of where the power is like there's no other church that does that but and then people i think people crave sensationalism they crave something that's more than the ordinary well whereas they don't know that falling under the power or like being touched and then falling is not biblical it's nowhere in the bible it's there are people who fall um maybe because of they can't stand the power of god but not from touching and then transferring the anointing and falling on the ground it's not in the bible and it's not biblical but people want mm. that because that's of the flesh and it's exciting and if you look at it really it comes from eastern religions right it's yeah kundalini and, uh, and all that kind of stuff that's where it comes from that's where you see it you don't see it in the bible mm. There's, uh, there's a comment here from, there, there are a lot of comments. I'm not sure you're reading it. I've been posting it. Quite a lot of people, you know, commenting. Thank you for your comments. Uh, please keep sending your comments or your questions or whatever. And please tag other people that you know they need to watch this or share this link. Uh, here, blessed, blessed, or the blessed is saying, I was told I'm not allowed to marry outside uh, CE, -E, Christ Embassy. And they chose who you marry. I hated church for a long time after that it's god who healed me that's a reality at christ embassy isn't it yes so sometime during everything i think it was after that first guy left and kind of um when i was still uh, maybe at an an off time with milton mm. or whatever there was a guy that came and he proposed marriage to me and he said he liked me very much and he was one of the like bigger givers in the church a south african guy and so we started as soon as he proposed himself to me i was like you know what if we're going to do this properly you have to go tell my pastor from beginning to end i said i'm going to do this properly and my understanding of what properly was was what i had been taught obviously over the years is that everything goes to your pastor because and this is another point that i really want to get across that is not okay. They said that the key to your life is inside your man of God. So mm. every single thing, you have to go to your pastor, you have to go to your pastor. I say, pastor, this is this guy that wants to marry me. This is what he says. This guy has to prepare a seed um, and take it to the pastor, sow the seed and ask permission. We asked for permission. We waited three months until the pastor said, yes, you guys can get married. Um, that guy eventually left um the ministry and uh one of the reasons that we fought a lot after he left because i was like why did you leave what's wrong what's going on he was having fun oops not sure what happened there uh we lost sandra but we're gonna just uh hold on a little bit to get to uh to get her back here but I mean, I see some of your comments, uh, you know, that's been coming in. Some of you guys have been part of Christ Embassy whilst we wait for Sandra to come back. That is some of you guys have been part of Christ Embassy and, and you've been commenting, you know, I, and I really like it because you're sharing your experiences uh, one way or the other. Uh, and some of you guys have been from the outside. But if you have watched Christ Embassy over the years and uh, and you've observed certain things that you feel uh, is not really uh biblical the way that they do it and, and what they they you know the way that they that they that they approach things and the way that they they conduct themselves and for me 
that is definitely something to to really um uh, you know um not just think about but something to really mold over and really ask ourselves you know what is really of god because listening to sandra there's just been quite a lot of you know it, it's more like christ embassy is just a place of so many errors you know uh and and some of the comments that have been coming on here you know people are asking uh you know people are saying uh pastor chris is faked uh they act like they're superior uh chigo said they act like they are superior to others and and it's obvious isn't it it's obvious because like you heard sandra or sandra just said they they always feel there's only two church there's just christ embassy and every other church so christ embassy is different christ embassy is superior christ embassy cannot be compared to other churches you know and and that's just what they've been pushing and so once you are in there you tend to believe it you tend to think no that's the way it should be that's the truth that's the reality but then that's not really the reality sandra is back here uh let me uh get her back yeah good to have you back we lost you thank you uh you were telling us, yeah you were telling us about your 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 um experience with some you know a man who loved you and he had to give a seat he had to you know to you know somehow meet the pastor first you have to get some sort of green light from your pastor and then after three months we have to wait for three months hey, we didn't have to wait for any amount of there's no prescribed amount of time but you know we kept waiting waiting can we do it now can we do it can we get married can we get married and then eventually three months later the pastor said okay you guys can start planning your wedding you can go ahead so the so then when he left he went back to his hometown and he said you know i i was concerned i was like you need to tell your pastor you need to tell your pastor you need to tell your pastor and he's like just stop 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 you do not need to keep running to your pastor every single with every single detail of your life and I was so offended. And I was like, what do you mean? I don't need to keep running to my pastor. But, you know, you are so trained that the, your pastor controlled every single aspect of your life. But I since learned that there is one mediator between you and God, and that is Christ Jesus. There's nobody else who needs to stand in the way between you and God. There are people who can teach us. There are people who can help us. And there are people who have helped me to heal. And I want to say that, you know, Sorry, just because I can see we don't have a lot of time left. I just want to help let people know that God has brought me to a place where I am strong enough and steady enough and I'm healed enough. I'm not angry anymore and I'm able to understand his word. There's something about being in a ministry that controls you so much to the point where it'll tell you who you marry and where you go and what you do. I had a life before I was in Christ Embassy. I used to enjoy playing basketball, sports, and all of that. But as soon as I got into the ministry, my life started being taken taken away from me bit by bit. I stopped playing sports. I stopped um, doing art. I stopped doing. I stopped going to visit my family. I also want to touch on the fact that I'm okay. I'm from Swaziland, obviously, and the ministry was in Johannesburg. I didn't go home for three years because it was so highly discouraged. Going home was not encouraged at all there was a time i asked to go home and also said to me you know every time that you go home you give the the devil opportunity to to take your life or to to put you <laughs> wow wow so going the home senior, was like the senior totally pastor, the senior pastor, pastor Ose Oyakilome, who's married to yes. pastor chris's brother ken Oyakilome, that you when you go mm -hmm. home to visit your family you give the devil an opportunity. What a load of lie. Rubbish. Trailer load <laughs> of lie. You see the cultage? That's just the way cult wants to keep you. They want to suck the energy of you. They want to suck your money. They want to be able to brainwash you. So they're trying to take away every, any common sense that is going to come from around you. Exactly. And my family were worried and I just thought they were the strange ones. Three years. Like, oh. Three years. We'll be married. We'll be, we'll be worried for a year. Three years. Yeah. And there's also somebody on Facebook asking the question. Oh, sorry, on on uh, YouTube saying, please ask her about leaders being forced to give large amounts of money towards pastor's birthday. You have this culture of celebrating pastor's birthday, or let's buy this pastor a car, or let's buy him a house. How does it work, Emily? 
<laughs> I was never uh, involved with if anyone was bought a car or a house, but definitely there were targets for everything. Um, we were taught to honor our man of God and then we will be honored. And then, you know, the other thing, I'm so sorry to divert, but um, said, just back to honoring your man of God, there's a scripture that says, honor your father and your mother in the Lord. There's a few scriptures that say mm. the same thing about honor your mother and father. In fact, it says, obey your mother and father in the Lord. Then there's other scriptures that talk about honor your mother and father. There's many of them. But the one that says, honor your mother and father in the Lord, they would say, who is your father in the Lord? Your father in the Lord is not your biological father. It is your pastor. Your mother in the Lord is not your mother, your biological mother. It wow. is your pastor. So when they say, obey your mother and the father in the Lord, obey your pastor so and then they use the scripture that say that uh jesus came to uh separate his mother from the, the daughter and all that kind of stuff and yeah so they put your family secondary to ministry so it's okay to have god first and then your family because god i mean holds everything together but not ministry and then your family i don't know these mm. people from moses and they want to put themselves. My mother, God bless her soul, passed away last month. And I can't tell you how grateful I am for the time that I had with her. They took away three years of her opportunity to come and visit my mom. And it is it's painful to think about in that time. My mother was trying to bring me back home and I couldn't see it. My cousin was telling me the other day, she's like, you know, all of us were concerned. Your mom, my mom was calling your mom and trying to tell her, get Sandra out of there, get Sandra out of there. And my mom kept telling me, come home, come home. And to me, it was an irritation because I felt like my mom didn't understand what I was doing. Like, why is she taking me away from the work of the ministry, the work of the ministry? Yeah. And the work of the ministry was more important than my own mother. So I'm very grateful that I got the time that I got to spend with her. Mm -hmm. That's quite, quite, quite sad. But yeah. At, at the end of the family, day, your real family, family. Yeah, at the end of the day, one of your real family is, is your biological family. Uh, you know, they are the ones that, that really care Absolutely. about you, whatever the state of relationship, you know. Uh, and God expects us to honor. When he says, honor your father and mother in the Lord, he's <laughs> saying, using the principles of the Lord, use your stand, your relationship in the Lord to honor your father and your mother. But now Christ number two is telling you no. If your father and mother in the Lord are your pastors, they're your they, how you know, I thought I knew Christ embassy, but listening to you is actually, you know, I could just see a cult. I could just see like this is a cult. This is totally something that is not biblical. That is not the gospel. What they are promoting there is not the gospel. Somebody asked me here to ask you. Uh, about about home sales. I'm not sure you go to the cell groups and all that. Do you? No. Okay, somebody somebody asked. Um, no, but I we didn't finish the question that everyone on targets for for any type of given giving. Everyone was giving tar given targets, and sometimes you were told like if you make a pledge, you would definitely be told that your pledge is not enough. Hmm. And you would sometimes have to increase. Yeah. And I know people went through a lot of stress. I personally, even as staff members, uh, we had targets and we had we had expectations of how much we've given and all of that. And we had good salaries, but we didn't they didn't last long. Yeah, so they, they give and it to you and then expected... mm. Mm. I have a comment from Christy Peters on Facebook saying Christ, Christ Embassy destroyed my marriage three years ago. They do not care about you. They only care about your money. Pastor Chris, but they give you coded as offer seven. You must give from 50 pounds and above. Wow, offer, offer seven. I wonder what that means. You know, it's a code. Yeah, it's the code name. Uh, and then we have uh, Winston Bailey saying, when you attend these churches in the morning, you have to always watch Pastor Chris on TV before the pastor pastoring and preach <laughs> you know weird. That, that's, uh, that's, that's a bit weird and then there is um a comment also from chigo she's a christian the church to a cult about time he went to bow his 
head to TB Joshua. He came off moving his hand and leg like him. Yeah. You know, Chris actually had an encounter with TB Joshua. Uh, and, and, and that really sort of isolated him from a lot of churches and ministries uh, in Nigeria. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's something that uh, a lot of people are really familiar with. And Winston also said, I think they are bigger than Paul because they are even telling people to vote Donald Trump because God chose him to be there. Okay, they're getting involved in, in American politics, you know. Uh, and, and yeah, that's also another comment okay. from John Price. He said, uh, Pastor Chris birthday was called Offer 7. Oh, okay. So you guys are former Christ Embassy guys. <laughs> we all we all <laughs> had targets and we all had to go to Lagos. I wonder where John is. Uh, with cash, line up, and hand over to Pastor. Wow, you made that guy a multi-millionaire right now. He's living like a king. There's so much money that you're never going to be able to spend for the rest of his life, you know. And I had, I just mean, after the first, interview, uh, the first interview I had with you, I had that, you know, even the money that they collect, they, they keep it cash, that there are rooms that you just go, you see money, you know. Now, th now this was, I was told this by someone who was part of the finance the department and they used to count the money you know and they i said so you guys didn't steal the money because if there's sin in christ embassy obviously some people will steal the money she said no at the beginning nobody really stole the money but later on people started stealing the money you know yeah. from counting but when there are no big events. yes there's no sense of accountability you would still nobody would know that you stole money you know because they keep the cash. They don't even try to go to the bank, that kind of thing. They keep, they keep the cash to try to use it. And, and that, Because obviously going to the bank is gonna raise a lot of questions and suspicions, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so which is something that they, they really struggle with. There's something that you had said you wanted to discuss, but I totally forgotten. Um, I can go over some things I also wanted to discuss. Yes, go ahead, please. <laughs> especially about the sex aspect of it, because a lot of people think that it's just because you can't control your flesh that you want to have sex with women. But um, I just want to draw people's attention to the fact that sex has always been used in many different types of rituals around the world. It's not about pleasure. It's not about enjoyment. It's about rituals. Um, it gives direct access. Having sex with somebody gives them direct access to your spirit it gives them direct access to your will it is a manipulation tool especially for women to get them to do what you want them to do um, and it allows them access to your gifts and to your destiny sex also has been used in many different um, rituals to worship other gods like the god of maternity and all that kind of stuff so these things are spiritual it's not like someone keep their legs together these things are spiritual and they are intense that's what i want people to understand is that the system that they have is not like an anything goes kind of system these things are intentional people do it in religions people do it in business people do it everywhere to get power and to get influence so and it also it's also about creating domination so once they begin to sleep with all these people they have they are now um yeah, they create like they, they become dominant over you and they can get you to do whatever they want you to do. And that is how you take over whatever. And then also the, the, the issue of abortions is um, about making sacrifices. So what I want people to also understand is that the spirit that is behind Christ Embassy, some people in Christ Embassy think that it is okay because they are not doing it. But then in Revelations 2, 20 something, it says don't tolerate se sexual immorality, that you're part of it. Don't tolerate it because you're as good as them if you're tolerating it. And also the other thing is, if this is the way that they are operating through sex yeah. and money and all those kind of things, that the spirit that is behind what they're doing is not the spirit of God. And so if this man of God is going to come and touch your head, why is he touching your head if it's not in the Bible? And what spirit are you receiving? What spirit is behind the Rhapsody of Realities? You think you're reading the word of God and you're being built up. You don't have to be sleeping with any pastor to be partaking. If I were you, I wouldn't stand in that line to go and get that anointing because you don't know what that anointing is, where it's coming from, where it's been or whatever. So yeah. the spirit that you're receiving from a church that sleeps with women and makes them have abortions over and over and over again is generating abortions. 
they are doing spiritual things. They are not doing fleshly things. They target fleshly people in order to be able to take advantage of them and get what they want from people. So um, there is definitely like the 419 aspect of it, the money and the power, whatever, but there is definitely a very deep demonic side of it and if you are one of those people that are just looking and saying well i'm not going to judge i'm not going to do this of course god is going to place the final judgment but you are putting yourself in line to be judged and you are also putting yourself at risk you're opening yourself up to those spirits that those people are operating with whether for the god of mammon or whatever it is that they they are serving but they ain't worshiping god yeah, you've had a lot of relationships with the with the pastors uh, and also some of the leaders at Christ and Mercy during your time there. And like you said earlier, you'd had I said you had two abortions, or you say you don't you don't even remember how many abortions you had there. Uh, so that's just you. So we can imagine how many other people, how many other women have done that. And you know, a lot of what people don't understand is, and you also you know, sex is going on all around in the office, in the car, you know, in the somewhere. Church. In the children's church have you ever run into anybody you haven't said there no <laughs> you know but, <laughs> i've never run into anybody <laughs> yeah but, but but you know that there's just sex going on there so the place in itself becomes like an altar like a shrine you know it's like a shrine where you need to do that for you to continue to keep that demonic covenant going you need to have the abortions you're killing babies lives are going down you know, it's not normal. You need to continually to have sex. Sex is a spiritual thing. Sex is worship, you know. Mm -hmm. But when you have that, you're not worshiping God through that sex because one, you're not married. Two, mm -hmm. you're married and you're having sex with someone who's not your wife. That's adultery. You're fornicating mm -hmm. and there's adultery. Mm -hmm. So obviously, there's a reason. And then you have that going on rampantly all around the building, all around the leadership, all around the, you know, uh, the people. So, I totally agree with you. We always have to see the spiritual dimension of it for us to understand. There's a comment from David from Blazing on, on Facebook. It says, there was about four or five of us one time during men meeting. Uh, the leader counted the money and wrote down how much each gave. This is done so best givers are awarded annually with trophies. What a joke, you know? And then there is also a comment That's how from- That's will be recognized in heaven. That's how we'll be recognized in heaven. That's why they love giving trophies and all that. There's uh, Mabai. She said, I remember I used to attend Christ Embassy services at UJ. And they always said that if you can, they always said that you can't be a leader if you don't have money. They said you will be an ineffective leader at Christ, at Christ Embassy Money Talks. So another good reason for you to have money or for them to choose people who have money that said you'll be an ineffective leader if you don't have money tell me how much did jesus had when jesus was around during his ministry how much, how much how much no people always claim jesus was well jesus was this no he had to depend on other people to support his ministry especially women you know people like susanna and mary they were given they were doing a whole lot behind the scene you know he couldn't feed people he had to take you know five loaves and two small fish from from somebody and, and feed them you know mm -hmm. so we must stop all these lies when we're trying to 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 uh, uh to 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 feed ourselves there's a comment also from uh lindy she said uh, thank god for i uh, thank god it opened my eyes earlier i stopped going there when i started hating the place and particularly Jose, as the pastor Jose or your kilome her arrogance and attitude was worldly there is yeah. no holiness there and then there's a comment from katie he said, Pastor Solomon, I used to hate you. I followed you for eight years, but now I have learned a lot from you. I'm one of your testimony. I love your courage. I'm on your side. Thank you, uh, Kate. I'm on your side also. God is on our side. There's just a whole, you know, a whole lot of comments. People saying they are shocked. Um, you know, Nelly here saying, wow, I was shocked when I watched this video. Um, you know, there's uh, also a quote here by, by what? Uh, Pastor Chris said from Nelly, she's saying, uh, this is a quote, Pastor Chris, according to her, Pastor Chris says, Bible does not condemn abortion. A baby conceived through rape can be aborted. So mm -hmm. that's what Pastor Chris uh, Oyekilome is saying. Uh, so uh, for some of you guys that are going to these churches and interacting with these churches, we have to be careful. On a last note, uh, 
uh, Sandra, is there something that you want to say that you feel like you really have to say this as we bring this, uh, you know, uh, interview to a close? I just want to read some scriptures, if that's okay, and then just challenge people to ask themselves a few questions. So okay. um, James 4, 17 says, whosoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is sin. Um, if you're getting advice, guidance, if, you, if, you, if you're getting advice, like financial advice, you want to be getting fin financial advice from someone who is doing well financially and, you know, can give you good advice. So why would you go to a pastor who is sleeping with women if you want to be under that anointing? So anyway, so Luke chapter 6, verse 46, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? Um, I think that scripture that says not everyone who says Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who do my will. I think Christ embassy people are people who are saying Lord, Lord, Lord. The pastors in particular, the ones that are sleeping around, they are saying Lord, Lord, and they're performing, performing miracles. But they're not performing miracles in the name of in the, the Jesus Christ, the real Jesus. Mm. I don't know what they're using, but um, just be careful because the people who are there think that they are serving God. And they are being mm -hmm. deceived. Um, um, and then First John 2 verse 4 says, Whoever says, I know him, but not, does not do what he commands is a liar. They are lying to you. Um, mm -hmm. So what you, are, what you are not changing, you are definitely choosing. They are not making any mistakes. And then the last scripture that I want to share, if people can read First Kings 22, there's a culture in Christ embassy that um discourages people from hearing negative testimonies from hearing negative things so in any um anything that could be the truth if you read first kings 22 there's about the it, it talks about the prophets who are telling the king what he wants to hear and there's one prophet that says no i refuse to tell you what you want to hear i will only tell you what what god says and what god says is that they will be destroyed so if you take a negative prophet's prophecy to Christ embassy, they reject it, which is, I think, Christ embassy's manipulative way of getting the bad news, of keeping the bad news about Christ embassy out. Because yes. they, have a, yeah. they have a word, they have a phrase that they all use and say, no, 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 I'm not going to listen. I'm going to protect my spirit. But they don't know. And they, 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 they just, they're blinded because it says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge, but they reject knowledge on the false basis that they are protecting their spirits. You are not protecting your spirits. Get knowledge. It will not hurt you. You need the knowledge. So don't reject the knowledge. And then I just want to say to people who are in Christ embassy, take the time to check yourself. If you want to stand up and shout and post on my Facebook and um, be passive aggressive and all that stuff, it's fine. When you go home, you and God, check yourself. Are you ready and willing to lose everything that you have for Christ? Are you clinging on to the possessions? Are you clinging on to the bonus checks? Are you clinging on to the traveling that you do? There are so many perks in Christ Embassy. Are you clinging on to those things? Are you clinging on to a so-called loyalty? Are you hanging on to the words of pastors? Or are you really willing to lose everything for Jesus Christ? Have that on the honest conversation with yourself. Are you still carnal or are you at all concerned about holiness? And if you are concerned about holiness, you should be concerned that there are pastors in your ministry that you are associated with sleeping mm. with women and making them have abortions. You cannot turn a blind eye. If the things that touch God's heart don't touch your heart, know that your conscience has been seared. And once your conscience has been seared, you are completely demonized. There is, mm. there is something else that is controlling you to speak the way you speak. If you see nothing wrong and you are sitting and you are defending these pastors, if you are defending sexual immorality or ignoring it or tolerating it, as the Bible says, you shouldn't tolerate it, then there is a problem. You need to check. Check where you stand with God and check your heart that these things are okay if you think that i'm still giving my testimony because of me then you are so selfish you see me as being selfish because this thing is way beyond me anymore i want many people to tell this story. i am one my story isn't even that bad if you listen to that woman's story yesterday my story is not even that bad. it is not about me it's not about me we're losing you. The battle is mine. 
Sandra? Can you hear me? Yes, that's better, I think. Can you hear me? Yes, it yes, means yes. that the battle that is going on is God's battle. We are soldiers in God's army. We need to be selfless. Stop being so concerned about what you have materialistically. What, you know, oh, God wants us to be prosperous. We can't be poor. You're, you're, you're distracted. You're distracted. So what? Yes, God has blessed me in so many ways. God has blessed me and blessed me and blessed me. It doesn't matter. Put God's work first. Don't, I don't mean printing and running around up and down selling rhapsodies and all that. That's distraction. It's all distraction. Listen to what God yeah. wants you to do. So stop being distracted about prosperity and all of these kind of things and have an honest conversation with yourself and check if you are willing to lose everything that you have, all the comfort and the prosperity that he wants you to have. If you are willing to lose it for him, then I think you're okay. But otherwise, I think you need to let go of the selfishness that you have. And true Christians... I read this just before I got in here. True, true Christians expose sin. They expose it and they rebuke it. They don't hide it and they don't tolerate it. Check yourself if you're a true, true Christian. Check the anointing and the spirit that you received and check where you stand with God because at the end, the pastor that you are clinging on to so tightly will not be there to answer with you. The one that you say that you are loyal to and will follow until the death will not be there. You don't need to be loyal to a pastor. You need to be loyal to God, to Jesus Christ. That's who saved you. That's who died on the cross for you. Not also, not Ken, not Chris, not any of those people who you need to have your heart right with is Jesus Christ. Mm. That's what I want to mm. say. You know, one of the things you said as we close this is just the fact that true Christians expose sin. When you expose sin, it doesn't mean that you don't love the people or you don't love the church, but you actually love them so much with the love of God that you need to exposing. Exposing something doesn't mean you're condemning them because you don't have the right to condemn them. Only God has the right to condemn them. But you're just trying to say, hey, look, this will destroy you, not just destroy you, but this will destroy other people. If a pastor is in sin and you're not, and you spoke to them and they're not changing, you have to expose them because they will destroy themselves and destroy the people they are leading. And you have a responsibility to take care of them, to protect mm -hmm. them, to take this to light. And every one of us, as we go to church, it's not like you're not going to go around and be looking for sin. No, 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 no. But you're going to make sure that, you know, that righteousness and holiness that we spoke about, that we talk amongst each other. If, I, if you love me enough, if you see me, Solomon, I'm married. I've been married, you know, seven years now. If you see me around the corner with someone who is not my, my wife, you have the right to, to tell me, it. hey, Solomon, what's going on here? And I'm not going to dispute you. I'm not going to say, well, it's none of your business. What do you mean? You are my brother, my sister in Christ, and I don't have the right to tell you it's none of my business. But you're actually trying to save me from sin. And that's the way we should treat each other, you know? And Sandra, I thank you so much for, you know, a lot of people are just commenting now. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you for sharing your story and all that kind of stuff, you know? Uh, I just want to thank you for, for being available, you know, the last two weeks just to share your story. Your story is not, I know for you, it's something that you really want to get off of your chest and really talk about it. Uh, I was talking to somebody, he said, look, you know, he knows you. And he said, look, the fact that Sandra actually came out to share this thing publicly is a big deal because Sandra is not even your, your extroverted everywhere person. She's somebody that, you know, uh, she's private, you know, but the fact that she actually decided to to come out and share this, for him, it was like, I believe everything she's saying, just the fact that she came out, because I know her, I know her very well for years, you know, I was with her, her office is just next to my office, you know, so it's, 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 I, I'm a, I, you know, I really want to, you know, say thank you, and you don't know what you have done to a lot of people that are watching, not just the people that are watching but people that are going to watch later on your video on YouTube, thousands of people have watched it already, you know, and people are still watching. So it, it is it is really important for us to share our story. And I really want to thank you. And I pray God's grace and God's wisdom, God's power over you, that I know you will see your heart is in the right place and you're really speaking for God. 
and may you find him. May you find him in unusual places. May you find him in ways that Christ's embassy, you know, you know, didn't disclose to you. You know, may you never find him in people like Christ's embassy tried to program people to find God in Christ. That's not the way that it is. May you find may you not find him in your how much you give. May you not find him in in in, in nothing. But may you find him in spirit. The Bible says we must worship him in spirit and in truth. May you find him in spirit and in truth. That's what it is. So I really want to say thank you so much, uh, you know, for, for coming uh all the way from Swaziland, you know, and, and I hope that you you know you just continue uh what you started. You have a good heart. Just continue that. So thank you so much, Sandra. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much, Mr. Solomon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. For yes, and I really want to say thank you also to everyone who is um, who's joined us. Thank you so much, guys. I, I really want to appreciate every one of you and for encouraging Sandra, giving comments. There are comments still coming in. A lot of people just saying thank you, sister, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know. Uh, but I really want to say thank you so much for every one of you. Please, if you want to subscribe, if you want to see more of this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Solomon's Temple. Please subscribe. Just so anytime we have a new video, you're going to be able to, uh, to check it out. Please subscribe to uh, our YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, Solomon's Temple, and share this. And also on Friday, we're going to have uh, we're going to have more fire on Friday myself and jay israel i'm just saying this out, out now we haven't made it official yet on friday we're gonna have, we're gonna have more fire you know we're gonna we're gonna expose some big bishop that's building some big 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 big, big shrines not gonna church you know raping women that we have known uh open cases so we're gonna talk about that so join us uh join me on my youtube channel so please go go right now and get onto a youtube channel just so and subscribe just so when we come on you're going to be able to catch it but thank you so much every one of you every one of you is called by god to be righteous and i know you will continue to seek after righteousness and continue to serve god you know so i thank you so much every one of you you're called to make a difference thank you so much god bless you have a wonderful evening